Subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us on this earth for a very, very, very short time. This world, my brothers and sisters, is not for you and I. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it very clear that we created the human and the jinn and we've placed them on this earth for a simple task, nothing more, nothing less. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we created them for what? Liya'budun, to worship me, to know me, to call others to me, to glorify me, to make me number one, not the number one, the ultimate one. That's your purpose on this earth. That's your maqsab. The very reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you life, the very reason you're walking on this earth is this and only this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my brothers and sisters, and please understand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not care. Allah doesn't care about your money. Allah doesn't care about your cars and your women and your houses. Allah doesn't care. When will we understand? Brother, you were born naked. You were born naked. Wallahi, it's amazing. You walk outside on the street and again, it's not just the pranksters. Sometimes you see brothers that are even supposed to be religious. Brothers with beads and whatever you want. Egos, brother. Egos the size of mountains. Egos and arrogance. Habibi, and Ashur Shaif Halak, brother. What, what is it that you're so proud of? What is it that you and I are so proud of? That the Prophet of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the greatest. Imagine the greatest. Brother, never mind what you and I think. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, when he's speaking to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did he say? Did he say to him that, you know what, you're one of the boys, that you're the best in the area, that you're the greatest prophet? He said, you're the greatest creation I ever created. He says to the Prophet of Allah, you're the greatest creation I ever created. You, ya Muhammad, you're the best. I didn't create anything better and greater than you. Yet what was his attitude like? The Sahaba, they described him. They said he was more shy. He was more modest than a virgin behind her veil. He was more shy. He had haya. In fact, shyness is a bad translation for haya. Because shyness is, is sometimes a weakness. Haya, he was modest. He was modest. Today, you and I tend to think that that's weakness. The brother doesn't talk. If you're led, you know, in my upbringing, the one that doesn't talk, miskin, the mastul, ma bihki, bro. The guy doesn't talk. That's how we're programmed. That the one that's strong, the one that has the ability, is the one that talks, brother. The one that stands up and says it like it is. Today, even our women do this. Brother gives an opinion that the women, kafat al Abu Janab. Why? Because today this is how we translate strength. But the guy's humble, he keeps to himself, he doesn't say much. No one, wallahi, no one even pays attention. So, so, so don't fall into the mistake and translate modesty to be weakness. For yes, the Prophet of Allah was more shyer than a virgin behind the veil. But this same Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Sahaba, the Sahaba, those that were on the battlefield, they described him. They said, Wallahi, when he was on the battlefield and the fighting would get so intense, the fighting was so intense that we couldn't fight anymore. What did they say? They used to say, we used to run behind the back of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, just to take a moment, just to take a breather, just to have a break. While he sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he continued fighting. 